Hello, and welcome to Why I Love dot dot dot. Today on Why I Love dot dot dot, I'm going to tell you why I love ants. Sorry, I don't know why I gave it the big reveal. I mean, you clicked on it. The older I get, the more obsessed I become with ants. And because I decided to do this vlog about it, I've been trying to work out why. And after a while, I realised that the reason I love ants is because they're always up to something. Think about it. Other animals aren't always up to something. We used to have a cat, our beloved Gracie. She was rarely up to anything. Sitting, sleeping, meowing. That was it. Ostriches. They peck, they eat, they run really fast, but that's it. They're not up to anything. Cows literally just chew cud and sit down if they think it's going to rain. That's it. Not up to anything. Even other insects. Think about bees. I mean, they're busy, hence the phrase busy as a bee, but we know what they're up to. They're pollinating, I think, and making honey. That's it. But ants, ants are always up to something. And that's what I like about them. I like their mystery. And they're cool. They're cool because they simply don't care what we think. They just carry on doing their stuff. And there's nothing cooler than that. I managed to capture some ants just being up to stuff right here in my back garden and when you look really closely it's properly fascinating. Here's one paying respects to a fallen comrade. Or maybe eating her. Here's one carrying either a tiny bit of plastic or probably more likely a bit of dead insect and then depositing it down a hole. Here's one carrying a proportionally huge insect of some sort before deciding it's too heavy and apparently giving up. I didn't get this one very well actually, but an ant seemed to be inexplicably carrying something massive and dead up a wall before dropping it and then getting caught in a spider's web. The idiot. And here's one carrying what I found out afterwards using a microscope is the corpse of a small spider. She just doesn't seem to know what to do with it. I've followed her for two minutes as she just randomly scurried about with it, almost like she was showing it off to her mates. After I saw that, I thought I'd try a bit of an experiment. So I found a deceased little spider and I put it down on the paving slab to see what would happen. And inside five minutes, it was this. single ant came and grabbed it before eventually disappearing into the undergrowth where I assume him and his mates tore it apart and devoured it. So if my garden research tells us anything it's that while ants are definitely always up to stuff a lot of that stuff is just carrying around bits of dead animals. I've also observed and documented ants disappearing into crevices and holes all over the garden, which leads me to surmise that underneath these very paving slabs is just one big, huge, heaving mass of ants ready to one day rise up and consume us all. And then look at this absolute frenzy of up to stuffness that I found on a pavement just the other day. I wasn't sure exactly what was going on. So I got in touch with the Royal Entomological Society. I mean, I really did. 
And Professor Jim Hardy, their actual director of science, told me that those white oval things are actually pupae in silk cocoons, they're not eggs. And he says that usually they'd be inside the nest, but they've obviously been exposed accidentally. So the ants are now scurrying around to get them to a safe place. You can actually see them here, transporting them underground through this crack. There's also a ton of winged ants here too. And Professor Hardy says they are the new reproductives, male and female. In fact, these are probably the only male ants you'll ever see because all worker ants, so every single one carrying a cocoon about here, are female. And that brings us onto one of my favourite days of the year, Flying Ant Day! Flying Ant Day! Although actually there isn't one day where ants fly, it's actually lots of days over the whole summer on days that are warm, dry and with wind speeds of less than 6.3 metres per second. This is a road sign near where I live and just below it, just there, you can see quite a big ants nest. I don't know how big it is compared to most ants nests but it's pretty big and I came past here last year on this particular area's flying ant day and the whole place, the whole, everywhere, all these whole sign, the pavement, everywhere was crawling and swarming with flying ants. It was inc an incredible sight. And I came back a few hours later and all the ants had gone and you just wouldn't have known uh, that they'd been there at all. Unfortunately that is not happening today. They've either already had their flying ant day or they're waiting for the right moment. But if we disturb the nest a bit we can have a look inside and just see them all in there scurrying around and doing whatever stuff they're getting up to. Um, these are black pavement ants, also known as Lassius niger or niger. As soon as I disturbed that nest you saw all those female worker ants running around like crazy, going mad, and you also would have seen those ants with wings. Now they're obviously flying ants that aren't quite ready yet to fly the coop. So when they're ready, those ants with wings, males and females, will fly in the air and then they will mate in mid-air. Because I suppose, you know, if you could, why not? You know, it's their version of the Mile High Club, another reason why I love ants. They do things spectacularly. Um, once that's happened, the males just die. They've done their job, that's the end. The impregnated females will land and then feast on their own wings for sustenance. And then they'll try and look for a place to start a nest of their own. Obviously a lot of those ants are going to get eaten by other predators, so they won't make it. And that's why there are so many flying ants. The ants are playing the percentages. When I was a kid, a very small kid, I used to imagine and I don't know why, but once they were underground, ants had similar lives to humans. So they had homes with TVs and radios and settees and armchairs and kitchens and bathrooms. I suppose it was a bit weird that I used to think that about ants because I didn't imagine any other creature having a similarly vaguely human life. But that's one of the reasons why I love ants because actually I wasn't that far away from the truth because ants really do have quite a few similarities to humans, as well as quite a lot of other amazing secrets that will absolutely blow your mind. Because that's the thing about ants. Ants are so amazing, so mind-boggling, so ridiculous, that almost any fact about them sounds like it's probably made up. Now, I'm not David Attenborough, at least. Not yet, and I'm not a wildlife photographer, and I'm certainly not even close to being an ant expert. But I think if I share with you a few of these incredible ant facts, that might help explain why I love them so much. Now this book by Mark W. Moffat, Adventures Among Ants, is a must for any ant aficionado like myself, and it is full of incredible facts that I could tell you about ants, like the ant that defends itself by detonating its own body and exploding a viscous, yellow, toxic glue over itself and its assailant, killing both of them instantly. Or I could tell you about the driver ants in Africa who 
some African tribes believe are so fearsome that pythons, before they devour their own prey, like an antelope or whatever it is they're going to eat, check the area for driver ants because they know when their body's all distended and they're just sitting there trying to digest, they would be at the mercy of these fearsome creatures. Or I could tell you about the weaver ants, that although they're much smaller than the driver ants, will take them and eat them using methods that are like as if they've been ripped from uh, one of the Mission Impossible movies. They hang off the end of leaves with their hind legs and grab them as they walk past and then lift them up and tear them apart and devour them. I could tell you about all those things. But what I really want to tell you about is the ant that first stirred my interest in these creatures. The Argentine ant. These ants aren't that big, but they are the greatest warriors of the ant world, the rulers of super colonies that dwarf all other kinds of ants or insects. Their biggest super colony, the first one I read about, stretches for 2,000 kilometers from Italy to Spain's Atlantic coast, and they have devoured and defeated every single ant in their path. No ant in the world can live with the voracious nature of these ants. These ants learnt their violent craft back in the badlands of Argentina. There, they lived on floodplains, which means that when the floods came, they'd have to retreat. Once they lowered, they'd have to go back and fight for their territory all over again. This kept happening and happening, and it turned them into crack fighting units, lean, battle-hardened, tough, cynical killers. To the extent that when they started migrating around the world, first on driftwood and then on boats, they found habitats that were much easier and ants that were easy to dominate. And they were able to establish super colonies they wouldn't have been able to dream of back home in Argentina. For a long time, people believed the secret to their success was that, unlike every other ant species, they simply didn't fight their own kind. Whenever they came across another colony of the same species, they simply joined forces and got bigger and more powerful. But that all changed in 2004 when scientists in California realised that that simply wasn't true. And in fact, beneath their feet, there was raging an almost inconceivably massive, violent, bloodthirsty turf war between rival Argentine ant colonies that was causing around 30 million ant casualties every year. That's a death about every second. And Mark Moffat has actually recorded seeing battle lines with thousands and thousands and thousands of dead ant carcasses marking where the battles had taken place. There are four Argentine ant super colonies in California, and the theory goes that each one of those is related back in the past to a colony in Argentina. Now, each one of those colonies will remain loyal to their ascendants, but not to their species. So what happens is those colonies keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger until they meet, and then civilizations collide. And that's when you get ant warfare on an almost unimaginable scale. So, I hope that helps to explain just why I love ants. They are the most incredible creature on this planet. Except maybe dolphins. Everyone wants to swim with dolphins, don't they? I just want to watch ants. They're always up to something.